quick revision video on mass spectrometry. The first thing to say, vaporised organic sample is ionised, so it loses an electron and it's accelerated through the mass spectrometer. So we can represent that in the form of equation. So the sample would be m, so m gaseous going to m plus gaseous and the electron. So the m plus gaseous is detected. So that's what we call the molecular ion. And the spectrometer measures the mass to charge ratio, or m over z for short, for the species detected. And if you think about it, the, all it's done is the original sample has lost an electron. So an electron has a negligible mass. So the mass to charge ratio of the m plus is the MR of the original sample. So the very simplest spectrum would look like that. So we have the mass to charge ratio along the x-axis, relative intensity on the y-axis, and there is that peak for the molecular ion. So we'd refer to this as the molecular ion peak. Now the spectra don't look as simple as that in reality. They're a lot more complicated with lots and lots of lines on. So we'll look at what causes that now. So that's caused by fragmentation. So the excess energy from the ionization process can be transferred into the molecular ion and make it split down further or fragment. So that's going to give us a smaller positive ion and a radical. So a simple equation to represent that, molecular ion gives a smaller positive ion plus radical. And it's the smaller positive ion, which we call the fragment ion, that's what's detected by the spectrometer. And of course, fragment ions can be broken down further into smaller and smaller fragments. And obviously you get a radical each time as well. And it's these positively charged ions that are detected. So I've just amended the original spectrum to show one fragment ion. So there's that original molecular ion peak. It's the peak furthest to the right with the largest m over z value. The fragment ions are always to the left of that with smaller mass to charge ratios. So if we look at an actual spectrum now, so this is for ethanol and we'll try and identify all of these peaks here and we'll give some equations for the processes that have taken place. So the first thing to say is there's the molecular ion peak. Now we know that it's ethanol so we know that the MR is 46. So this peak here at 46 is due to the original molecule minus the electron. So an equation to represent what happened there there's your gaseous ethanol, and it's ionized into the positive ion and the electron. Now you'll notice just to the right, very, very small peak with a mass one more than the molecular ion peak. That's what we call the M plus one peak. And that's due to the fact that carbon has carbon-13 isotope. It's only 1% abundant, so there's not very much of this. So this tiny little peak, just to the right is what we call the M plus one peak. They sometimes ask to suggest what's caused that. Now the best way to work out fragment ions is to draw the displayed formula and basically start chopping it up and seeing if you can get um, a match between a piece of the molecule and the M over Z value for a peak. So We'll look at this one here. This has got an M over Z value of 31. So what could cause that? Well, if we break the molecule here, and if we add up, we've got 12, 13, 14, 15, plus that 16 is 31. So this peak here is due to this fragment with the positive charge on it. So the equation for that would look like this. So we've got the molecular ion peak, Remember, we're breaking it here, and we want this part to carry the positive charge because that's given us that m over z value of 31. So the other part is the radical. So you can see there we've got a methyl radical, which isn't detected. Now you'll notice also we've got a peak at 15, m over z 15. So 
So basically what's happening there is the methyl part is carrying the positive charge and this is now the radical because that can happen as well. Now there's more than just that bond that can break. So imagine if we broke this bond here, we just have to do this um, without any animations. So imagine if that bond breaks, this part carries the positive charge. So that would have an M over Z value of 16 plus 117. So you might also, in the mass spectrum of ethanol, see a peak at 17 as well. And then if this part carried the positive charge instead of the OH, then you'd get a peak at 29. It's worth knowing some common fragments, so we'll use this table and suggest some possible identities of fragment ions with these M over Z values. So we've already seen 15 at CH3+. I've just mentioned the 17 one, so that's OH+, and you'd get those from alcohols. 29 would be a, an ethyl fragment, C2H5+, 43 propyl, and 57 butyl. So we'll finish with looking at how mass spec can distinguish between isomers. So we've got propan 1 all on the left, propan 2 all on the right. And they're obviously going to have the same uh, molecular ion peak at M over Z60. So we'll start breaking up the molecule and seeing what kind of fragments we can produce and what their M over Z values would be. So you can see they can both generate fragments at 15 and 45. So they can both generate a CH3 fragment. And the 45s, slightly different formulae, but they've both got two carbons, one, two, three, four, five hydrogens, and an oxygen. One, two, one, two, three, four, five, and the oxygen. Likewise, they can both break a bond here between the carbon and the oxygen. So they would both generate fragments at M over Z17, so for the OH plus fragment, or three carbons and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven hydrogens. And you can see that can do something similar as well. However, only propan one all can break a bond like this and generate fragments at M over Z29. So this part here, if it carries a positive charge, would have an M over Z of 29. And likewise, if the positive charge went here, you've got CH2OH, and that's at 31. So this can't create those fragments. So that's how you could distinguish between the two isomers from the spectra.